Okay. So I have not checked to see if the song will play, but if it doesn't, we can go to the YouTube link. Link. Here's the link for the song. And if you would type done after you're finished. I am we'll get it plays on the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and heal your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. I God that he let me I am the Lord your healer I sent my word and healed your disease I am the Lord your healer God's name is more powerful than any disease you can name tonight. You might have received a horrible report from the doctors and told you your disease is incurable. But you know what? There's hope tonight. There is hope because God's promised that he would heal us. I want you to put his word on your lips tonight. Sing his word back to him. And see if his name isn't more powerful than cancer, than heart disease, or any disease that you can name tonight. Oh yes, he's your healer. Let's sing it to him. You are the God that healeth me. You are the God. Hey, Christ Walks. Good to see you. We missed you a couple of times recently. And it's good to have you, Savon. And Treasure. And Matthew. And also, the regulars, Cornadeo, I, Mario, who's our greeter. Um, I want to show you something about the word disease. It's not just a physical disease, although he mentions some physical diseases, but there are spiritual diseases and emotional diseases 
And disease is two words put together, dis plus ease. Jesus said in the, that his burden is easy. Ease, easy. His yoke is easy and his burden is easy. When we come to him, he can heal our disease, a physical disease. Hi, Trinity. Well, and he can heal it right here on earth. And I personally know, I know a lady, I know this one lady, her name's Betty. And she's since gone home to heaven. But years ago, Betty was in inpatient hospice. And all her family flew in from all over the country where they live to come and tell her goodbye. But guess what? The doctors were wrong, and God was not finished with Betty's time here on earth. She got well. She left hospice, and she went home, and she lived for at least two or three more years, and she was perfectly fine, except she was old. I mean, but the thing that they thought was going to kill her within the next three or four days did not. So God has the last word. I know people that have been diagnosed with, a, um, with depression, and told that they had clinical depression, a chronic dysthymia, it's called depression, and they would be depressed for the rest of their lives. But guess what? They're not. But sometimes the Lord heals here on earth. Sometimes he heals by taking us to heaven. But the word disease is just dis-ease, and we want to be at rest, at ease with the Lord Jesus. So let's pray. Father, we just come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you that you are our healer that you are also our Redeemer, our Savior. You are the one who loves us. You are the lover of our souls. So, Father, tonight as we gather together, I ask that you would move among us to touch, to heal, to restore each and every one of us and also those we love in the area of our greatest need. So, Father, we bless you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We have been discussing Yes, Mario. Sometimes he heals us by letting us go home. We are discussing the ABCs of the Father Heart of God. And one reason that I love to ponder who God is is because when we know, and I mean both heart and and mind know who God is, then we are certain of our security as his sons and daughters, and we are secure and safe in his love. Sick or well, healed or not yet. And when we are safe and secure in our identity in Christ, welcome Amy Rose, then we are truly free. When you are safe, when you know who God is and you know that you belong to him, then you and I are free to be who God created us to be. I'm not the same as you. You're not the same as me. But we are free in Christ to be who he created, designed, and planned for us to be. And we're free to do whatever it is that God has created us to do, even walk through illness. And besides that, We are also free to allow others to be who God designed them to be. And when we are all doing that, living free, then guess what? There is peace among us. There is peace within us, and there is a peace that flows forth from us. And the peace which the world longs for is manifest in and through us. And that draws others to the light and life of Messiah Yeshua, Jesus. Isn't that neat to think about? Hey, Trinity. I don't know if I said hello to you or not. Last week, we did some of the Jehovah names of God. And um, the ones we did were interesting. But I wanted to figure out exactly what Jehovah did. He's Jehovah Jireh, he's provider, that was one. And we looked up Jehovah, I looked up Jehovah in a Bible dictionary, and I found this, and I wanted to share it. I'm not going to post all the scriptures, but this is interesting. This is from Easton's Bible dictionary, but others said the same thing. And just so you know, if you're not, hey, Luanna, hi. 
just so you know, if you're not used to me, I don't pronounce some of the Hebrew words correctly. <laughs> That's okay. God knows what I'm saying, and it's written down for you. Jehovah, Easton says, is the special and significant name, not Mary, an a, a title such as Lord Adonai, by which God revealed himself to the ancient Hebrews. That was in Exodus 6-2 and Exodus 6-3. This name, I am, Yahweh. This name, which is the Tetramogrammon of the Greeks, was held by the later Jews to be so sacred, and I know Jews now, that it was never pronounced except by the high priest on the great day of atonement when he entered into the most holy place. Whenever this name appears in the sacred books, they pronounce it, and they still do, the Jews, Adonai, which is Lord. And they use another word in its stead because they will not say the name of God. And often, if you, if you have any Jewish friends, if they write the word God, they'll type it out like that. They, they don't, they just, for some reason, they have a taboo against writing his name out. And then I saw something interesting, and I had no idea what it was. Like, this, the source said that the Masoretes gave, it, gave to it the vowel points appropriate for this word. And if you, like me, wonder what in the world are the Masoretes, do you know what they are? Corndeo might. Some of you might. I don't. They were a group of Jewish scribes. Aren't we grateful to those Jewish scribes who copied it meticulously, stroke by stroke, in as perfection as they could possibly do? They helped preserve that text of the Old Testament scriptures, and they developed notes on the text that was based on Jewish, Jewish tradition. So that's how we know what some of the Jewish traditions are, but it's also how they did the, um, they copied the manuscripts. For us, they didn't know they were doing it for us. This Jewish practice was founded on a false interpretation of Leviticus 24.16. And the meaning of the word appears from Exodus 3.14 to be the unchanging, eternal, self-existent God. The I am that I am, a covenant-keeping God. So I am. And the Hebrew name, Jehovah, is generally translated in all of the authorized versions and the revised standard versions. It's not departed from this by the word Lord. Have you ever seen the word Lord printed in all caps, but it's tiny? To distinguish it from the rendering of the Hebrew Adonai and the Greek Kairos, which are also rendered translated Lord, but printed in the usual type. The Hebrew word is translated Jehovah only in Exodus 6.3, Psalms 83.18, Isaiah, and in the compound names that we are studying, Jehovah Jireh. And if you want to delve more into this, there's a whole bunch on it. And here's a link which I will pin. And then it will be removed after a day or two. So tonight, or last week, we discussed these. I love the one, the last one we did last week. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And because he is Jehovah Jireh, our provider, we are purchased for God. He is Jehovah Makdesh, sanctification. He's our sanctification, and because he is, that's one of his names, we are sanctified. He is Jehovah Nisi, our banner. His banner, remember that song, Over Me, He is Love. And we are led in Christ's triumph. Tonight, we're going to do a few more of the Jehovah names of God. The first one. It's wonderful. He is Jehovah Roy, our shepherd, based on Psalm 23, or named in Psalm 23, and we are his sheep, Psalm 100. And it says, 
the Lord, God, is our shepherd. And it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Some more verses about provision by our shepherd are Philippians 4.19. These are some of the things the Lord does for us as our shepherd. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. A shepherd provides the needs for his sheep. 1 Peter 2.25 says, "Uh huh, For you are like sheep going astray. Weren't we? But now you have returned to the shepherd and the overseer of your souls. He welcomes us back. He searches us out. Some more verses about the shepherd kind of care of the Lord has for us. Revelation 7:17 7, says, For the Lamb in the center of the throne will be their shepherd. If you doubt the Trinity, the Lamb of God, Jesus, will be the shepherd. Jehovah. Roy. He will lead them to fountains of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And Psalm 34, 9, Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear, and that means reverence, obey, respect, him lack nothing. I wonder what a, a shepherd out in the wilderness would do if some sheep said, meh, and turned his back on him. Psalm 78, Reminds us of what the Lord did and will do and does. He led out his people like sheep and guided them like a flock in the wilderness. Remember when they were in the desert for 40 years? Isaiah forty eleven. It's a very sweet scripture. It says, He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms. See the capital H? And carries them close to his heart. He gently leads the nursing ewes. And because he's our shepherd, we are his sheep. And this is a verse that you love. I wish I had a picture of a sheep to make a poster of it. I am his sheep, Psalm 103. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep. Of his pasture. Mario used to like a song. About I'm the Lord's sheep. To the tune of the YMCA. So I said bah bah. You're a sheep. I'm a sheep. Oh we'll find it sometime. Mario might can find it again another day. And we'll put it in there. It's a really cute song. It's a children's song. Well, don't put it until the end, because everybody will turn it on, and it's funny, and it's good. Save it for the end. Thank you. There are great teachings out there on sheep. I did a whole series once on sheep and shepherds, and there are great verses too, but that's for another time. Except, we just need to think about one aspect of being a sheep, of being God's own sheep, and it's found in John 10. And that is a good passage for us to listen to, to read, to ponder. And as we do, as you hear me read this and you read along, let's ask ourselves. Ask yourself, Lord, I ask you to show us, is the voice of Jesus the primary voice we listen to and obey? Is he always first and foremost in our thoughts? And do we trust him? as a sheep does their shepherd in the natural. So we're going to read John 10. Or most of it. And this is Jesus speaking his word to us then and now. It starts out with the subtitle, I am the good shepherd. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. The only way 
to become God's sheep or child is to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior by faith alone in Christ alone. There is simply no other way. No child is born saved, and false teachers will tell us to do this, do that, and then you are saved, but it's not so. And the Lord Jesus is our shepherd. He lays down his life for the sheep. Verse 2 says, But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Entering the door as the one and only good shepherd required Jesus to go to the cross. So verse 1 could apply to us entering as children of God, but also to those false teachers out there who do some kind of crazy signs and wonders and then want you to think that there's another Jesus or some of the cults, there's no other Jesus. And the Jesus that's the real Jesus, he went to the cross. And when the real shepherd came, the gatekeeper, to him the gatekeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. Did you know Jesus calls you by name? He knows you that in intimately. So truly, truly, I say to you, he, does not, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Now beginning in verse 4. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow. But they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them who he was teaching, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. And Dodie note, I think we kind of understand this. We learn who Jesus is, how, in the word, and in trusting obedience. They, the disciples, and the people that were around should have known right away because of the way shepherds tended flocks. And there are shepherds and sheep all over out in the wilderness. All the sheep might be in the night pen together. One shepherd or more had been guarding the entrance all night. And in the morning, each shepherd called their own sheep. And their sheep recognized their voice and came to him. And because they didn't understand, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came, Jesus is talking, that they may have life and have it abundantly. And Dodi note, something to remember and never forget. Jesus offers us abundant life. All others, false shepherds, offer us death and ultimately destruction. Verse 11 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And he did too, didn't he? And then they talk some more about sheep. In Luke 10, he who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. But the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he's just a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. But Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down 
my life for the sheep. And it, and it's speaking to the Jewish people, and I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. And so there will be one flock, one shepherd. So what was God's plan from the beginning? To have one flock, one shepherd. Of Jews and Gentiles from every nation and every tribe and every language and every tongue. One church. Dodie note, one flock, one shepherd, one church. The body of Christ, made up of different nationalities and tribes and styles, but only one true church, following that one and only good shepherd, Jesus. Do you think the Lord wants division? Does he want us arguing about styles of worship and stuff like that? No, he does not. And then it continues in Luke 10, for this reason, and what this, the verse just before that said, um, I lay down my life for the sheep, and then he's bringing in other sheep. So for this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my father. So isn't Luke 10 interesting when you're thinking about the Lord is our shepherd and we are his sheep? And then looking on Bible Hub, it referenced earlier two Old Testament passages about the good, the good shepherd. The first one, of course, is Psalm 23, and we'll read that. It never hurts to hear the word. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When he heals our disease, that final time, we're going to be dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. And the other Old Testament when, remember earlier, it's, that source told us that there were only two places where this name was. The other one was Ezekiel 34, 11 through 24. But you know what? <laughs> Let's read all of Ezekiel 34. It's not that long. I don't know about you, but in this season of my life, I really need to know and remember how tenderly and jealously the Lord guards me. He takes care of me. and He takes care of you. And he loves me no matter what's going on. But this, Ezekiel, was when the leaders and shepherds of Israel were in one of their rebellious phases. You know how they did, they obeyed God, everything went well, and then they started following false gods and doing things their own way, and then things did not go so well. God had to steer them back with discipline. And our pastors are shepherds over us, symbolically. So this is, Ezekiel is a prophecy against the shepherds of Israel. Yes, over and over, it's like tedious to read. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, even to the shepherds. Thus says the Lord God. Ah, shepherds of Israel who have been feeding yourselves. Should not shepherds feed the sheep? And as we're reading this, think of your pastor. Or pastors that you don't want to be your pastor. You eat the fat. You clothe yourselves with the wool. You slaughter the fat ones, but you do not feed the sheep. The weak 
you have not strengthened. The sick, you have not healed. The injured, you have not bound up. The strayed, you have not brought back. The lost, you have not sought. But with force and harshness, you have ruled them. So, result, they were scattered. Because there was no shepherd, and they became food for all the wild beasts. My sheep were scattered. They wandered over all the mountains and on every high hill. My sheep were scattered over all the face of the earth, with none to search or seek for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, declares the Lord God, surely because my sheep have become a prey and my sheep have become food for all the wild beasts since there was no shepherd and because my shepherds have not searched for my sheep but the shepherds have fed themselves and have not fed my sheep. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds and I will require my sheep at their hand and put a stop to their feeding the sheep. No longer shall the shepherds feed themselves. I will rescue my sheep from their mouths, that they may not be food for them. Do you see what God did? Do you see how he feels about his sheep, felt about those sheep, feels about us as his sheep? See, God rescued his sheep. And don't we love this reminder? God was not happy with those shepherds that were not taking care of those sheep, his sheep. And then, talking, yes, yes, he did. And he had a plan for them. And the plan for all of us from every nation, every tribe, Jew and Gentile was found in who? Jesus. Yes, and us too. It's a good passage if you've been feeling discouraged at all. Some of us have great shepherds. Some of us not so great. For the Lord will seek them out as the heading. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock, when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places, all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pastures, and shall feed on the mountains of Israel. Look at this verse 15. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. And then a warning. For the sheep. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and male goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture that you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pasture and to drink the clear water that you must muddy the rest of the water with your feet? And must my sheep eat when you have trodden with your feet? And drink what you have muddied with your feet. Therefore, says the Lord God to them, Behold, I myself, I, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder and thrust all the weak with your horns till you have scattered them abroad. I will rescue my flock, 
and they shall no longer be a prey, and I will judge between the sheep and the sheep. And then look what it says. And I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them and he shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord I have spoken. And God did it. But for us today, the nature and character and protective heart of God has not, yes, has not changed. Circumstances for us are different. And yet sometimes, sadly similar, sometimes we want to chase after the culture and the idols of the culture, don't we? And sometimes we have good shepherds and sometimes we have bad shepherds. And sometimes in order to get what we think we want, instead of trusting God, we push and shove and knock other children of God out of the way and make fun of them and mock them. Is that a good thing to do? I don't think so. His sheep, the love of God for us as his sheep has not changed, nor has his feelings about the false shepherds or the people who hurt or wound or take advantage of his sheep, his children, us. Yes, it's Ezekiel. If you scroll back, you can see where. But if I scroll back, I'll lose my place. I think 33, maybe 38. And the rest of that passage says, Psalmist, welcome. And we are just reading this because we're looking at what God, we're, we're talking, we're thinking about God as our shepherd. And what we're looking at this for is the extent to which God, as our shepherd, he is, he is our shepherd. And we are his sheep, how we are to respond to him and how protective and zealous and just caring he is for us. So that's what we're doing with this. But it's his story too. And I will make with them a covenant of peace and banish wild beasts from the land so that they may dwell securely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will make them and, and the places all around my hill a blessing and I will send down the showers in their season and they shall be showers of blessing. Okay. And the trees of the field shall yield their fruit, and the earth shall yield its increase, and they shall be secure in their land. And they shall know that I am the Lord when I break the bars of their yoke and deliver them from the hand of those who enslave them. They shall no more be a prey to the nations, nor shall the beast of the land devour them. They shall dwell securely, and none shall make them afraid. And I will provide for them renowned plantations, so that they shall no more be consumed with hunger in the land, and no longer suffer the reproach of the nations. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God with them, and that they, the house of Israel, Remember he said, but he's bringing in other sheep are my people, declares the Lord God. And you are my sheep, human sheep of my pasture. And I am your God, declares the Lord God. Now, I am not a Bible scholar, okay, by any means. And I'm not the smartest person in the world. And I don't know everything, but I have a heart for the Lord. And I know the heart of the Father for us. And I haven't seen this all happen completely. Even when Israel was restored, was it back in the 40s or the 50s or whenever it was, the 60s? It's not been a place of peace, not yet. But personally, I am very sure that this heart cry of God will not be perfected completely until the time of the new heaven and the new earth. I don't know that that's true, but that's what I feel like. But either way... Jesus is our good shepherd, and this is God's pastoral heart for each and every one of us. So tonight we remember. He is Jehovah Rahi, our shepherd, and we are his sheep. 
And what time is it? Oh, we're going to stop here. That's just enough. Oh, I'm so sad. I really wanted to do the next one, but we'll do it next week. Because next, let me see how long it is. Oh, we can finish it. I wanted to do it because the song was this. This is a really cool one. This is why I picked the song. He is Jehovah Rapha, our healer, and we are being renewed. Thank you. I thought it was in the 40s, but see, I was only two years old, so. <laughs> but it has not been a land of peace, not yet. Not wait, not like he said. He is Jehovah Rapha, our healer, and we are being renewed. The scripture for that is, is it Exodus 15, 20, 26, but we're picking up in 25. And Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a log. And when he cast it into the waters, they were sweetened. And there the Lord made for them a statue and an, or an ordinance, and he tested them. It, saying, if, if you will diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God and do that which is right in his eyes and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord your healer. Yes, that's right, Psalmist. The new heaven and the new earth and the heavenly Jerusalem. But there was one condition in that and to be a healer. And that reminded me of James 5.13, which says, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Verse 15, and the prayer of faith will save one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. So, as the Lord is our healer, and he heals, heals our dis-ease of all sorts. We are being renewed. We're not perfected yet. We are being renewed. Second Corinthians 4.16 says, So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. Dirty note. We are born. One day we die. Our bodies get old. Thankfully, our spirit does not and will live eternally. Our outer self or body will one day cease to exist, but our inner self, our spirit, is eternal and is always being renewed. And even if sometimes we forget that, it's still true. And also, we have this promise in Philippians 1, 6, and I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion on the day of Christ Jesus. So even if you're falling apart physically, your inner self is not wasting away. You are, as a child of God, a born-again child of God, you are connected to the vine. We are connected to the vine. We are safe. We are secure. We have a shepherd who watches over us, a healer who is healing us. And one day, we will all be together in that new heaven and that new earth, the new Jerusalem. And there will be no weeping, no sorrow, no sickness, no fighting, no arguing, no doctrinal bickering. We will be one church with one Lord and one shepherd. Jesus. So, Father, I ask you to bless us as we go forth from this time together. Help us to ponder and remember that you are our shepherd, that you shepherd us, and that you give us shepherds, under shepherds here on earth to help take care of us. Father, I love the picture I've seen where the shepherd calls his sheep and they come out of the night pen, but only the sheep that belong to that shepherd obey his voice. Lord, you are our shepherd. Help us to hear you to know your voice, 
to be diligent in study in the word and to spend time in prayer with you. And Father, let us follow no false shepherds ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming. And next week, we're, um, we're Jehovah Shalom. I thought we were this week, but we're not. Actually, next week, I think we're going to do the I Love Jehovah Names, too. Uh, next week, I think we're going to pause um, from this. And uh, I'm not sure, but I think what we're going to do next week is I found a study that I wrote and gave before. And it's the uh, it's, next week is the week before Resurrection Sunday. So I think we're going to do the seven, six or seven, the last words of Christ um, before he went to the cro on the cross. So I think that would be fun to do, and that's what I'm tempting, um, um, leaning towards for next week. But thank you for coming, and I'll see you around the site and tomorrow and next week. Oh yes, Mario is going to give us the ba song, and we'll pin it so you can come back for it if you want. Thank you for coming. Do you have the ba song, Mario? Mario showed me this song like 13 or 15 years ago. Thank you for coming, Treasure. It was good to see you. Oh, there it is, that, that top one and the bottom one. Those are both great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm pinning both of them. And do, do come back and look at them.